when you're here, you won't be far from Walt Disney World, Epcot Center, SeaWorld, Universal Studios. Come to Florida and stay in the center of it all. Decaying beneath the hot Florida sun, this mega resort was once the largest hotel in Central Florida, bigger than any resort even within Disney. But this isn't just any abandoned hotel, this is something special. In this video, I'm going to show you what's inside, exploring the ruins of this massive property, everywhere from the expansive back of house areas to the surreal lobby and the vast convention spaces. We're also going to find out what happened here and what could have been. So let's begin where it all started. The Disney Company opened the Walt Disney World Resort in October of 1971. Cars lined up for miles as the theme park was already a massive hit, so much so that their two hotels plus campground were constantly at capacity. The Carlando Corporation out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina saw opportunity here. They purchased 248 acres of land in 1969 for just $1.6 million. In 1971, they announced the Carlando Center, multi-hotel, condo, and entertainment facility just a thousand feet away from the Vacation Kingdom. It would contain over 2,600 hotel rooms and include a motor inn, a 22-story hotel tower, and a commercial plaza. The crown jewel of this development would be the 650-foot observation tower, touted as the tallest structure in Florida. Phase 1 of the project would begin first in 1972, with the 960-room Carlando Motor Inn. To support all of these rooms, a large back-of-house facility was constructed, and we're going to begin there. With overturned golf carts. Stripped for parts, it looks like, too. Look at this. This is all, uh... This is like the parking area for all the service vehicles of the... of the resort. Paint peeling off of the shower unit, outdoor shower unit. This is the courtyard of one of the four hotel room clusters that made up the 960 hotel rooms. Each one would contain 240 rooms and feature a garden and a pool. Clearly though, these buildings display 1970s architecture, and we'll take a look inside them later on. At the price of $100 million, the complex was poised to be the largest hotel in Florida when it was all said and done. After the completion of Phase 1 in January 1973, that being the Motor Inn, the rest would soon follow in the coming years. In satellite photos from this time, you can actually see the rest of the site being prepared for construction. This, however, would never happen. Carlando wouldn't even last a full year. The company failed to pay interest loans worth around $2.2 million, and lost around the same amount by the end of their first year. 
Those future plans were suddenly scrapped, and the property defaulted to their mortgage lender, who put it up for sale. The hotel was sold to the Hyatt Corporation, who renamed the property to the Orlando Hyatt House. They spent money on new landscaping and began construction on the largest convention center in Central Florida. Hyatt would continue to operate the property as an upscale hotel resort for many successful decades thereafter. Souvenirs and marketplace. With the faint noise of a Kissimmee tourist helicopter above. Oh wow, this whole thing is completely, completely intact still. Well, to some degree at least. I mean, the shelves are still here. The, the pizza boxes are still here. The menu, ceiling fans. And they look, there's just buckets around it trying to catch it, but obviously without uh, intensive care and stuff like this. Why didn't they just move this entire thing? <laughs> Man, look at the water damage here. Just water collecting. The Coca Cola machines, all smashed up. Look at this trellis. Oh, wow, look at that collapsing over there. Wow, the water damage in here is significantly worse than I thought. All of this roof damage is uh, likely not even vandals. It's, it's probably all just water leaking in and completely taking down these ceiling tiles. The lobby stands at the center of it all. Guests would of course check in here, but also socialize, party, and dine. Back in the 70s, it looked quite a bit different and was a revolutionary design for the era, combining all of those amenities plus a retail angle as well. Now, it's a familiar Florida theme park hotel space, locked in its last year of operation. As a small disclaimer, I understand that finding the location of this hotel won't be difficult. However, I would like to warn you that there is security on site, and I strongly encourage you not to visit this property. But if you do, please don't destroy, vandalize, or steal anything from it, and help preserve this astonishing time capsule of history. It's extremely quiet in here, in fact. It's like all that covers the carpet here is just ceiling tile that fell from the, from the well, ceiling. Oh my god. The ceiling is, or the, the carpet is completely green from the, from the water above. Moss growing on it and a little cafe up here, a little dining area. Very classic. Florida. Everything's dead except for the fake ones. The buffet is not being served tonight, but uh, still have the, the trays where you'd put the food. All with a trellis at the very entrance to this buffet, which is not lined up with the staircase for the buffet section, which is annoying me booth right here. It's like a bar right here. And then, uh, oh wow, it's a fountain. It's a main lobby fountain. So then this was all the, the dining area. And then this, uh, this I suppose would have been the main lobby, yeah. Benches around the, the palm trees. Check in right over there. Down that way, and yeah, here's the bar. These palm trees look to be alive. I think uh, these are just growing across the floor. I don't know from where, though. Oh, 
<laughs> Land of Hollywood. Free appetizer. Wonder if this is still admissible. <laughs> Standing in Kissimmee. The Seattle yeah, guest services area right here with all of the theme park. All the theme park stuff. Went wild right here, which has been closed for years. Orlando Sun souvenirs. Oh my God, it's like everything is still in there. Or at least the shelving, I should say. Displays. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just heard a raindrop underneath the ceiling, which is extremely moldy. Authentic pin collection. Look at how moldy this chair is. Oh my god. I can't be in here for very long, but... Wow, these are, these look extremely old. This is a huge, this is a huge uh, blueprint right here. See all the buildings, we're, we're in this structure right here, central building lobby area. In 1977, the hotel was once again sold and later rebranded to simply just the Hyatt Orlando. They continued operating as a favorite resort close to the entrance of Disney for over 30 years. That was until the tourism crash following September 11, 2001. Hyatt was no exception and likely saw over 50% of their regular occupancy disappear. Disney themselves were struggling and pricing hotel rooms at rock bottom rates as low as $77 a night, which for Hyatt was very hard to compete with. Just a few months later in May of 2002, it was revealed that they had stopped making payments on their $22 million in debt. In September 2003, bankruptcy was inevitable, and the resort was abruptly closed with just one day of notice. A chain link fence was erected around the perimeter, and the future of the property was now hanging in the balance. This is pitch black in here. Look at all the ovens. Huge mixer right there. I assume pictures of how their food is supposed to be prepared. Oh, look at this uh, peanuts stand. Oh my, there's still more kitchen in here. Oh, po oh it's a popcorn machine. Oh, wow. Well, there's obviously still Syrup in there for Coke. It's leaking through that box. There must have been like a soda that exploded on this or something. It just ate through the metal. Wow. What? Who was throwing these through a window? <laughs> what? Literally looks like a hospital, not a hotel corridor. Okay. 
Holy smokes. Thousands of plates in here. Yep. This is the convention center. After an auction in 2004, a company purchased the resort with plans to return it back to its original state. They also considered other ideas, like tearing down everything and building a large tower on the site called the Landmark Sun Resort and Spa. They decided to put this on hold, and instead opened the asset as it stood in the meantime, spending $5 million in renovations and opening it under their own flag in 2007. They called it the Orlando Sun Resort by Lexington. Wow. This is an enormous room. Oh wow, a huge dragonfly. I can't believe none of these windows are broken. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> Look at these chandeliers. Still incredibly intact. Actually, this whole room is pretty dry and pretty well kept. Reviews from guests staying in the now open resort were not coming back pleasant. Customers complained of mold and mildew everywhere, poor customer service, and outdated decor. While it's rather difficult to get a high level of accuracy with this, somewhere between 2009 and 2011, the resort was being flagged by the Ramada brand. Still, this didn't help with the bad reviews. Clearly, things were being run on the cheap with many employees living on the site and clusters of the hotel rooms being shut down for elongated periods of time. This amounted to higher maintenance costs and management would often not pay some employees for months. That resulted in a lawsuit in 2011. After switching back to its final name in 2012, occupancy was low and with steadily rising maintenance costs, the resort was closed for good. I'm actually gonna wear my mask for this one. You see the whole lobby from here. Well, sort of. You can see how that's uh, collapsing in. Oh yeah. It's plastic letters. Actually, I have an idea. There we go. That works. Wow. That's a great photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at the pool. Well, Hyatt Orlando, near Walt Disney World Resort. Look at this. This is from 1986. Meet our new general manager, 1985, Hyatt Orlando. 
Oh, there's that ice cream place we saw earlier in the lobby. Oh, look at that. Back sheets, convention center stuff. Oh, wow, look at that. Boy, that looked pretty nice in the day. Certainly not anymore. In 2014, the site was put up for sale at $75 million. It didn't sell, and was relisted again in 2018. The most recent news came in 2021, when a New York company was reportedly in negotiations to buy the property for $35 million. Their intentions were to keep the existing structures and reformat them into condos. Yeah, these are a bit trashed. Wow, these are in pretty good condition. Really? I don't know. Yeah, looks like all the rooms are about the same here. Unless you know the history, this seemingly innocuous resort could just be any other off site Disney hotel. But this was certainly much more than that. Not only was it the largest hotel in Central Florida, and one of the first to open based off the coming success of Walt Disney World, but it was intended to be a destination itself. If fully built out, it would have been the tallest structure in the area for decades. But even with what was built, it's absolutely massive. So it's rare for a lodging property this big to fail like this but it's a slow motion series of events spanning decades that ultimately lead to something like this happening. But it's also easy to forget the human aspect of this resort. It was a place to stay for millions of families on their way to Disney, likely having very fond memories of it. To them, it will always be the Carlando Motor Inn, or the Orlando Hyatt House, the Hyatt Orlando, or even the Orlando Sun. I've of course stayed in many hotels around the Disney property, so being here and knowing what once was is a surreal, eerie feeling. That's especially true as darkness consumed my surroundings. It's a feeling I'll never forget. Thanks for watching.